your glasses. Five, four, three, two, one. Glasses on. Glasses on. Glasses on. Be careful putting your glasses on. And that was the Solar Eclipse Timer app created by Dr. Gordon Telpin. It was designed to help us enjoy the eclipse in a very meticulous manner. Something that many eclipse observers and photographers deal with, especially when it's their first eclipse, is timing. When does the eclipse start? When do you take your glasses off? When do you put them back on? And if you're taking pictures, when do you take your solar filter off your camera or telescope? And this app can help you take the guesswork out of your whole process. A few weeks ago, I showed you three ways you can simulate the eclipse ahead of time to prepare. I think doing that is great practice and you learn a lot about the anatomy of an eclipse. And how this app differs is that it fits into your pocket, it gives you up-to-date information on the eclipse based on your exact GPS coordinates so there's nothing to look up. And as we heard, it talks to you so you can keep your eyes on the eclipse but your ears to the ground listening for the cues. On top of that, this app lets you practice with data from previous five eclipses as well as the upcoming one on April 8, 2024. And in this video, I'll do a full demo of the app and show you all of the features and highlight those that I find really useful. You can download this app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and get more information from solareclipsetimer.com. The app is free to download and use, but the data for April 8th will cost you $1.99. So just think of it as buying another pair of Eclipse glasses. And being able to practice for the Eclipse for multiple different locations is totally worth it, in my opinion. There's also an associated book called Eclipse Day 2024 and More, also written by Gordon Telepin. This upcoming eclipse will be my third total eclipse and probably my 15th partial eclipse. So I kind of considered myself an intermediate expert, pro maybe. But this book goes into extreme detail gathered from both research and personal experience. The digital version of the book is $10 and a little disclaimer, Dr. Gordon Telepin sent me the book earlier for evaluation purposes. But I bought the data pack for April 8th for the app myself. This video is focused on the solar eclipse timer itself, but I wanted to mention that you have this book as a resource that you can add to your arsenal. It's extremely useful, especially if you're looking to photograph the eclipse in white light. There's a ton of information in this book, including example settings that you could use, the different types of solar filters, what the sun should look like, and you get all that information in words, pictures, and graphs. And some of what's in the book can be used for general solar astrophotography. So link to the book in the description below as well. So let's demo the app. So this is the user interface for the Solar Eclipse Timer app. Everything you need to know is on this front page here. And the first thing that you really should do is click on this first button here. It says new users, tap for an app tutorial. And what that does is it plays a Hello, video. Solar Eclipse Timer user, in your hand you are holding. There you go, pause it. So this is about a nine minute video showing you everything you need to know about how to use this app. Uh, it's very informative, it's only nine minutes. I recommend going through this the first time you open the application. So I'm gonna go out of it since I've already watched it a couple of times. There are, before I go into the other options here, I'm gonna go over into settings and talk about uh, this option here, the photographer's mode. So it says the description is in photographer's mode, all app announcements are about eclipse timing and tone plays at max eclipse. No eclipse observation reminders are played. This mode is for serious eclipse photographers. So I'm a little bit conflicted with this option because although I want to just do photography, there will be other people with me. So I'm wondering if I can tie this to, uh, connect this to a Bluetooth speaker and play all of the uh, visual cues as well as imaging cues, photography cues uh, on a Bluetooth speaker rather than on my phone. That's something I have to test, but for now, I'm gonna keep photographer's mode off uh, and hear everything it has to say. But it's a cool feature that you can turn on and off as you please. One tip from Gordon Telepon himself is to have this app running on two different phones on Eclipse Day. So you can set one on regular mode and one on photographer's mode. Uh, two other settings options you have is the time label. So by default, it is local time, but you can click on this and switch to universal time. We'll see it later on in part of the user interface that some of it has UTC time on it. Changing the time here will not affect your system time, but it will only change the label on the main timer screen. This was added because some Eclipse chasers like to use UTC time. And sound on, um, we, I'll show you where the movie is, what movie it's talking about. Uh, it's 
really cool seeing people's reactions or hearing people's reactions during the 2017 eclipse. Um, and you can turn sound on or off. And it only affects the crowd noise and not the cues from the app itself. I'm going to keep that on and I'm going to keep everything else as is. Photographer's mode also has a camera chore worksheet that you can download and take notes. I think this would be extremely helpful if you're trying to image your very first solar eclipse. Write down everything you can for your future self and be prepared. All right, going back to home. The other thing you want to do is do a device sound check. If you're work, if you want to make sure that you have the audio cues, you want to make sure that the audio, uh, this app has access to your device's audio. Um, you can go into the permissions to turn it on or off, but I'm just going to play this really quickly. Eclipse event, open app. Cool. All right. Playing the next one too. Second contact in two minutes. Observe for shadow bands. Very cool. So they both work for me. Uh, one thing, another thing you can do, which I'm not going to do in this video is to schedule a test notification. So 75 seconds after you click on this, it's supposed to play uh, the first uh, tune that we heard here, um, just to show that this works outside of, you know, just the app that it'll notify you even when you're not looking at the phone, which is pretty cool. All right, back to the home screen, we will select select an eclipse uh, to time. So we have options uh, to test out previous five eclipses. Um, the August 21, 2017 is probably gonna be the closest one for a lot of us uh, using, these app, using this app. Um, and if you're missing the April 8th data, so this is the one thing that you need to pay for, it's uh, $2, it's really worth it if you wanna uh, plan ahead. Uh, it's like buying another pair of Eclipse glasses, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So just, just do it. But I'm going to click on this option because I want to practice uh, this Eclipse, the April 8th Eclipse, and I'll press OK. And here we have some information about our location. So uh, one thing is if I click on this tap to get my GPS location, what that'll do is it'll use my device's GPS, uh, built-in GPS functionality and grab my latitude and longitude, my GPS coordinates. Uh, and this is insanely accurate, at least my phone's GPS is insanely accurate, where uh, when I was testing this earlier, I clicked on that and put my actual address here, uh, which is uh, cool, but also uh, I'm not gonna do that here and show you exactly where I live. So what I did is I, Went to Google Maps, I found a location near where I'll be in Marble Falls, Texas. It's a little bit west of Austin, where I will see maximum totality there. And I picked a random location, got the latitude and longitude there, and I pre-filled it here. Uh, and it picked the closest address to that GPS location and filled it in. I do like that the address has the word max in it because we will see max totality there. And one thing you'll notice is that after you put in your latitude and longitude or after you get your GPS coordinates, that the contact times get pre-filled. Uh, for some reason, they don't get pre-filled. You can click on calculate contact times and it should fill it in. Uh, and this is the screen where I was telling you earlier that it fills everything in UTC time. So it'll be uh, 517 uh, C1, which is uh, five hours off. But when I click on tap to load contact times, this will actually like use a little bit of uh, some information, some warnings that you must have a solar solar glasses on if the sun is bright. If I click on this, I get the local time for my current location, which is the Eastern time zone. These numbers look good, but they're actually off by one hour. So it's kind of an illusion. When we change to daylight time in March, these numbers will adjust by one hour for me in the East. But when I get to Texas in April, I expect to see the correct times as that will be my local time zone. So one tip is to make sure you reuse this app and retest everything after the daylight saving time change. And it tells me that the total duration is at 4.11, or it will be four minutes, 11 seconds, and it will start at 13.34 or 1.34 p.m. So if you're scripting your images, this is going to be, this page is going to be your friend because uh, it'll, this will use your GPS coordinates, exact GPS coordinates, give you the exact times that you can, not, you can write down for your script and take images uh, at those times. If for some reason you see that 
the times don't make sense if they're, if they're off by a second or two. Uh, it is very dependent on your device's uh, internal clock and internal mechanisms. Uh, if you see that they're off, you can click on adjust and you can adjust it very slightly. And I learned that the main reason for using the adjust buttons here is for the lunar limb corrections for second and third contact. The times vary by plus or minus two to three seconds. And you can get this information from Javier Jubier's website. It blows my mind that we can know this ahead of time. And once you're practicing, what you can do is you can click on save Eclipse. And what this will do is let you save a, a local, local file here that is read by this application later on. So you can get your test data. So I'm just gonna do this uh, test one, keep it simple. So that's today's date, GPS, blah, blah, blah. These are our contact information. Uh, you can do more here, uh, including setting the temperature. Let's say it's going to be 60 degrees, sky conditions, etc., etc., and then you click on done. Great. And where that'll show up is in this Eclipse data option here. So now if I click on this uh, later on, I have all of this uh, information already um, as part of this test. And this is extremely helpful because then I can go back here. Let's say go back to uh, select an eclipse. If I switch GPS locations to let's say not there, if I do like 999, right? And then I do, so now I'm in like Meadow Lakes, Texas. Is, it, is this going to see totality? It will see totality. Uh, around those times, and I'll do max time, yes. Um, it's a little bit off, and then I'll do save eclipse, blah, and then I'll name it test two, click on done. Now in my eclipse data, I have two sets of data. So you can say that this is my backup location, my primary location, backup location. So I can go back here, I can click on load GPS data, press OK. And now here, this is my GPS data for my first location. So if I go to GPS data, you can see it's 55366. And then for my second location, click here, click on tap to load GPS data. Click on GPS data, you can see 55999. So this I find extremely helpful because I can plan out my second, third, fourth, and fifth backup locations. Uh, along the path of totality all in here and I'll be ready to make adjustments on of all of my imaging gear on the fly uh, without having to sit there do another GPS coordinates look up uh, write down all the contact times modify my scripts etc uh, so I can use this here and prepare way ahead of time and I absolutely love this feature here and if you don't need it, you delete and you're good to go. Going back to the home screen. So now comes one of the fun ones, which is the Eclipse video practice session. So once you click on this, so it loads a real time Eclipse site video. So this is from 2017 uh, and the totality is fixed at uh, two minutes. And the whole runtime for this is four minutes and 45 seconds. So I am not going to do this in real time, so I'll press OK. I'll let this play. We can hear the meat, we can hear the audio. Pretty cool. And what I'm going to do is, um, for this video, I'm going to skip to where this app starts talking to us uh, at the different, uh, different parts. 60 seconds, observe for shadow bands. So that was the first uh, message that we heard, observe for shadow bands, pretty cool. I'm hoping to see that. Uh, it may be a little bit hard since the sun will be very high in the sky. 40 seconds, observe umbra approach. 30 seconds, hands on camera filters. 20, remove camera filters. 15. 10. Five, four, three, two, one. Glasses off, glasses off. 
Uh, the glasses off part is going to be helpful. This is why I want to set this up with a uh, Bluetooth Observe speaker. planets and stars. Because there will be other people around me and I want to announce it to everyone around me. Max eclipse in 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that was a totality bell and... Observe the horizon. Third contact in 20 seconds. 10, get your glasses. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Glasses on, glasses on, glasses on. Plus 15, replace camera filters. Plus 60, enjoy the partial phase phenomena in reverse order. Next notification is fourth contact. All right, All right I exited that. So that was uh, a total about three and a half minutes or so. And even by just by practicing this, it felt super quick. And during the eclipse, uh, even though we're gonna get about four minutes of totality, I am expecting time to just fly by and everyone just rushing everywhere and just trying our best to both take photos of it as well as enjoy the eclipse itself and I think that's where this application this uh, this app helps in making sure that you do you know look up look or the look at the horizon that you enjoy totality it reminds you when to t put your glasses on so that you're not guessing like hey the sun is bright and now I should put my glasses on so very cool just using this app gets me excited about the eclipse itself uh, the next option we'll look at is here all eclipse announcements so this one is so if you use this feature so this is going to give you a full run through of the eclipse that you are practicing so the total runtime is one hour and ten minutes so i'm not going to go through all of this but it is a cool uh workout that you can do so it says you know total duration is one minute five seconds just to give you an idea of what it will be like and the Total first contact time, so it's right now it's 11, almost 11.30, and at 11.33, I'm going to get a notification for first contact. Uh, and second contact will be at midnight. So I already went through this once. It works beautifully uh, for practice. Uh, I have my phone off, my screen is off, and it reminds me. Super helpful for practicing. Uh, get all the surprise announcements out of the way. Play with this as well. And once you're done, click on stop here. If you, if you want to stop all pending notifications, otherwise it will notify you uh, in the future. Next option here is to go to the GPS data screen. So this is kind of what we already saw before when we clicked on uh, which eclipse we are going to observe. And you can set your GPS location here as well. Uh, another thing I did forget to show you, I'm going to go back here, is when we select an eclipse. When you click on, don't click on done. Uh, if you want to redo the GPS data, uh, you can click on GPS data, fill it in here, or you can click on this little option here, this little icon here, um, to, and it will uh, readjust or, or refetch your GPS data and fill this out for you. So that's pretty cool too. Now I'm going to talk to you about my favorite function of this. Uh, and something that I had trouble with the last time during the 2017 eclipse that I tried to time, which is the partial phase image times. So when I click on this, it says this feature is called the partial phase image sequence calculator. And what this does is it gives you exact times that you should take uh, photos during the partial eclipse. So since I stopped it, it doesn't have any eclipse data. So I'm gonna select an eclipse to time, go back here, click done, going back to home. Click on partial phase eclipse images, press OK. These are all zero because I need to go back and actually select an eclipse. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to select an eclipse to time. Click on this, press OK. I'm gonna say tap to lower contact times. Got the contact times. Go back to home, uh, partial phase eclipse image times. Click OK, and now, OK, so this filled up. So there's a little bit of a, uh, order of operations that you need to do, which is select the clips that you want to practice with, and make sure you get the contact times, and then you come back here, and you can see the partial phase eclipse. And you can see that 
there are a bunch of times here that um, you have between first contact all the way to fourth contact and you can use these times if you're scripting your photography you can script these times into your uh, software whatever you're using and take images at these times and what this will do is it'll give you uh, you can see on the right hand side um, examples of what the sun will look like at these specific times and it gives you a really nice interval of the solar eclipse so super cool the images on the right side are actual images and here's an example of the sequence that you can get using this data these are evenly spaced and in my opinion evenly satisfying also from this PPISC page here, you can download a worksheet by clicking the link at the bottom where you can write down your notes for various times. And as mentioned in the screenshot, the times will automatically adjust if you update to a new viewing location by pulling the GPS data again. All right, going back to the app, uh, everything you need to know about this app can be found in this app. There are a couple ways to get help. So you have the help button on the bottom right hand side here. You click on this, you get a bunch of frequently asked questions that you can have answered here. For example, the partial eclipse timer screen. So I didn't go over the partial eclipse. So if you're not in the path of totality, you can still use this. It'll give you, uh, I think the first and last contacts and, and max eclipse for your location. So you can read up on uh, what's here. If I go back to the home screen, there's also this little I button here. You click on this and it gives you some more information where you can get help such as solareclipsetimer.com, the YouTube channel and the help file, which is what we saw earlier. And you can also use this email to reach out for help and get some information about uh, using proper eye protection and some software information here. Go back. And finally, the last option is, I already briefly mentioned it, is the Eclipse Day Preparation Book. Uh, super helpful book, especially if you're imaging. There's a lot of great information about what kind of settings you should use for your camera. Uh, highly recommend checking it out because you want to be as prepared as possible. Going back to the home screen, when you're done practicing with this, when you're done with the Eclipse, you can click on timer, click on stop, and this will clear everything out for you. So once you go back on timer, it's all zeros because it has no information. So there you have it, demo of this application. Super useful, super handy. Special thanks to Dr. Gordon Telpin for creating this app, as well as for partnering with me to make sure that I give you accurate information. This app existed back in 2017, but I wish I knew about it back then. I did all of my imaging calculations manually, and although it was a lot of fun learning about the processes and timing involved of an eclipse, it took a lot of time, and I wasn't exactly accurate in my calculations. So this app will take a lot of the manual work out of my process, and I'm looking forward to using it for the eclipse. I plan on filling the app with data for my primary location in Texas, as well as my two or three backup locations that I have in that area in case of clouds. I also plan on scripting some of my images and the timing data that comes out of this application will be super helpful. I'm still finalizing some of my plans, especially with my imaging. And as soon as I figure that out, I'll do my best to share my knowledge with you. We're only seven weeks away from the eclipse. It sounds like a lot of time, but time is flying. And there's so many more things that I wanna do, but not enough time. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. If you have any questions about the app, you can ask below, I'll do my best to help you, but feel free to utilize the help information that you have in the app itself. I'm really excited for this eclipse. Are you? Clear skies.